Hello, today I'm going to talk you through the early stages of how football management within Excel works, and also go into a bit of detail what is happening behind the scenes. If you haven't yet seen my announcement or features video, I would suggest you watch that video first. And apologies for the delay in making this tutorial. The community feedback has been really overwhelming. Thank you so much for your support and your patience. You've helped me find a couple of bugs, which are now fixed, and we're currently on version 1.3. To start with today, I'm going to run you through the basics of how to get this game onto your PC. Follow the links in the YouTube video straight to my blog and simply click the download button. The file is 6 megabytes, that shouldn't take you too long at all to download. Once you've got it on your machine, I like to open it, allow macros, and save it down as another version. That way I tend to find that Excel lets it run the formula and macros without any issues. I remind you that all the macros and formula are unlocked and available for you to look at, so if you're worried about anything at all that you're downloading, you can check this out for yourself before you run it. Alright, let's get into it. For today's walkthrough, I'm going to play with Wigan Athletic in League 1. On a new game are immediately put onto the Team Hub tab, which is your summary tab for everything that is going on behind the scenes from league fixtures, cup competitions, formations, squad selection, and the league table. As a reminder, the blue bar at the top of the screen is your handy navigation tool. The first three are probably where you're going to spend most of your time, so that's going to be the big focus of this video. Don't forget that the Intro and Help tab is there if you need a quick read of how things work. Or you can always leave me a comment on this YouTube video or on my blog and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Onto squad selection, on this page you're introduced to the 10 attributes that define a player's ability. You also get the ranking of these players into key attacking, midfield and defence positions relative to their teammates. The attack, midfield and defence outcomes are the key element of this game and they directly influence the match outcomes when we go through those later. On this screen the important things to change are the yellow cells and the light pink cells. This is effectively important in maximizing the attack, midfield and defense outcomes. As I said before, this directly influences your match outcomes and the general success of your team. Knowing the Wigan squad a little bit, I'm going to pick my preferred players in their positions, whilst also keeping in mind maximizing the best players in their best positions on the field. Once I'm happy with my squad, it's very important that I click the set tactic and team choice button, as this is directly saving into memory my team's stats. You can see how this works if I quickly refer you to the team reputation tab which takes the average of two things. One, the squad selection tactic score that we've just set, and the second being the team's reputation. I've weighed these evenly to take into consideration the behavioural impact that a club's reputation can have on performance, which will change every season depending how they go, as well as having clear inputs of your decisions. Now let's talk training and development. This is the key to every management game, every good management game, and that's developing those wonder kids and homegrown talent. For today, and this example, I'm just going to get all the players working on their weakest skills, which is not something I'd suggest you do. As for an example, a defender working on their shooting skills is not that important. Development in this game is directly related to game time. The more game time you get, the more you will develop. Starting players get 0.09 attributes a week, substitutes 0.06, and squad players 0.03. That is all if their hidden potential ceiling has not been met. More so, players 33 or older start deteriorating at a loss of ability points of 0.2 per game week. So if you're an aging star, your game time is equally important to try to keep your skill in the game as much as possible. What this means, there is a development cap each season and across your career. So even if a player has the perfect potential ability, if their starting or current ability is too far away from that level, they will, or they do not get enough game time, they will never reach their potential. I hope that makes sense to you. Now let's talk about how to use the team search hub. Hopefully this is relatively straightforward, but hopefully it's an easy way to see how your team stacks up from a key attribute perspective and also across the summary stats to other teams. As I mentioned in my match features video, the player search tab is where all the transfers can occur. However, this is in the form of a player swap, where the player's value sold has to equal or exceed the player value bought. Looking at the Wigan squad, the weakest area seems to be attack. So we want to find a player that can help with this. For those not used to Excel, I find the easiest way to do this is to put limitations on my filter. The first one I do is on value, the second is on shooting, and the third is to arrange by speed. In order to get the best bang for buck, I'm also going to get the player with the best current ability, ignoring goalkeeping, that is fast and decent at shooting. Hence, I'm buying Fasayo here to bolster my attack. Don't forget that after you make a transfer, it is important to put them into your squad selection and update your training schedules for them. And as you can see, my attacking squad instantly increases by adding this new player. Now let's play some matches, shall we? 
for the most part, the red progress next button will be the button that you press most within this game, taking you game week by game week. For each press of the button, you're going to loop through a few tabs. The first is the team hub, which will take you to the tactics hub, which will then take you to the training, and then that will progress a match, which will loop you back to the team hub to start again. Results from each match are separated by division when the first notification appears, which is for the Premier League and Championship, and then the second notification is for all League 1 and League 2 matches. And our first match you'll see were lost away from home to Bolton. All results are displayed is an home versus away format and this is consistent across both league and cup competitions. In our second match we drew at home to Cambridge and in our third match we drew at home to Blackburn. Not the greatest start to the season. To understand how these results are working we need to unhide the match outcomes tab. Now it is very important to not adjust this tab as it will damage the integrity of this game. This is where all results are determined for all league and cup matches for all teams. The match engine is a random normal distribution of 29 different match outcomes that tries to balance out the likelihood of results between two even teams ending in either narrow wins and losses or draws. It also allows for the small chance of underdog teams to win and to win big. There are two factors that influence this outcome. One, home advantage provides a skew and the secondly is team strength and this is the team strength that we talked about before in the form of attack, midfield and defense from your tactic selection. The best way to show this is with a live example of the Portsmouth Blackburn game. The top charts here show the raw distribution before skew was applied with most matches going to end either in a draw a small one goal difference match or a two goal difference. The bottom shot shows how the advantage Portsmouth has pushes the likelihood of these results towards them winning. If this is too hard to understand, I'll try to put it simply. There's always a chance of small teams winning, no matter the opposition. Playing at home gives you an advantage. Maximizing your percentages in attack, midfield and defense gives you the best chance of an outcome. Also, consistently high finishes maximizes your reputation to also give you the best chance of results. This is where consistently gives you a reward. Second last thing I want to talk through is after these matches, I want to show you how just how important it is to, to continue to select your squad selection. As you can see here, I haven't selected for a few matches. And you can see here that the training and development that our team has gone through each game week actually makes a difference in match strength. So it's really important that you regularly reset your squad and save down into memory your squad selection so you get that updated training benefit week on week. Now, the last thing I want to talk you through here is the end of season feature where we're going to cheat a little bit and pretend that only playing a few games counts as a full season. At the end of the season you get the opportunity to release unwanted players from your team. It's important to have spots open to allow up to three youth players from joining. Now this is all going to be determined by how many spots you have up to a maximum of three. So for example if you have three open spots three youth players will join. If you only have two open spots two youth players will join. If you only have one open spot only one player will join and if you've got no open spot no players will join. So if you don't have any spots perhaps think about releasing your worst players. Once we click the end of season buttons, a few things happens in the background. The first, the AI release their three worst players across their squads and also welcome in three new youth players. This happens across all English teams plus all the non-playable teams across the game. Promotion and relegation will also occur and teams' reputations will be updated. The data from the season that you've just played will also copy into a new tab in a raw form for you to look back at any time that you want as you continue through the seasons. This includes your team hub info, your fixtures and results, your cup outcomes for the season. New fixtures and cup competitions get drawn and every player in the database ages up by one year. Then your new season begins. As this season that we've just played is a bit broken, the promotion and relegation is perhaps a little bit unrealistic where we've had both Arsenal and Aston Villa being relegated, being relegated without playing a single game. Also you can see here that our youth players have joined our squad already with random attributes distributed across the 10 skills. Now it's all up to you to develop these players into the superstars that you know that they can be. And that marks about everything that I wanted to go through today. I hope this helped give you a taste of what this Excel management game is about. Also gives you a few hints and tips about playing it for yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.